As part of the creative team enlisted by James Cameron to bring the futuristic military technology of aliens to life, artists Sid Mead and Ron Cobb conceived the armored personnel carrier used by the Colonial Marines sent to LV-426 on their rescue mission. The APC is one of the film's signature pieces of technology, instantly recognizable in the realm of iconic fictional vehicles. Outside of Cameron's film, it has endured throughout the extended universe, appearing in several comics, novels, and video games, as well as being made available for fans to take a closer look in countless toys and models. True to the painstaking detail brought into just about every element of the world of aliens, the APC was thoroughly designed, and its details and capabilities are outlined magnificently in official resources. The Weyland Yutani Report's overview of the vehicle describes that the M577 APC's light weight and low profile is ideal for troop transport via the UD 4L Cheyenne dropship. All series M577s allow for a driver, a section commander, and 13 troop passengers. The midsection houses the Tactical Operations Center, allowing the section commander to maintain audio and visual communication with troop members, as well as monitor their vital statistics. As per the Colonial Marines Tech Manual and Alien the Blueprints, a low-cost, lightweight APC capable of being transported into combat aboard a dropship was required to satisfy the Marine 70 battlefield deployment strategy. From this, the M577 armored personnel carrier was born. The M577 fully mobile and well-armed is a multi-role vehicle designed as part of a lightly equipped rapid reaction force. Because of the rigid design restrictions imposed by the need for the APC to be drop transportable, it has resulted in a lighter and less capable vehicle than other APCs currently in service. Because of the USCM requirement that the vehicle's combat weight be kept below 15,000 kilograms, the M577's components were designed to be as lightweight and sturdy as possible. The chassis chosen for the prototype was based on that of the M570 family of wheeled vehicles, which in the late 60s was being developed for use in a variety of roles, mainly as a prime mover and motor platform. The APC is built around a 4x4 wheeled powered by a 286 kilowatt multi-fuel gas turbine engine, which generates a power to weight ratio in the region of 19.7 kilowatts per kilonewton. Although the wheeled configuration does not give as rugged a cross-country performance as a tracked vehicle, it does offer considerable savings in terms of weight penalties and reliability. Each of the massive 159cm diameter wheels receives power independently from the engine via a fully automatic, electronically controlled transmission system. The tires are armored against small arms and splinter, and their pressure is controlled by a central regulation system. This allows the driver to reduce the vehicle's ground pressure over soft terrain by deflating the tires, while still being able to reinflate them for road travel. The M577's chassis is made of bonded titanium and incorporates a 5cm foam-packed floor cavity to protect against forged fragment mines. Ground clearance is normally only 22cm, but the vehicle employs a hydro-pneumatic fully active suspension to allow a clean ride over rough terrain. The suspension is capable of boosting ground clearance by a full 30 centimeters and allows the M577 to comfortably tackle vertical obstacles up to 0.5 meters. The hull is made from welded light alloys and is latched and bonded, rather than welded, to the chassis in order to prevent fatigue and failure from the piezoelectric effects associated with an alloy titanium interface. The inside of the hull is lined with brawn carbide ceramic tiles, each of which has been coated with a polymer resin to prevent cracks or shattering during normal travel. The resin is 2 mm thick on the outward-facing surface of the tile and is said to provide limited albedo protection against pulse lasers. The tiles are backed with a thick layer of woven fire-resistant polymer armor to limit spalling in the event of hull penetration. Because of the weight restrictions, the armor protection is very light. It is capable of defeating fragmentation, small arm rounds, and low-velocity armor-penetrating ammunition such as rifle grenades. However, its ability to stop dedicated tank-killing weaponry is slight. 200 years ago, the transaxle was known as the assembly that combines the functionality of the transmission and the differential along with the associated components of the driven axle. Cut forward to present day, where each wheel for the M577 APC has a fully integrated direct drive in-wheel motor. This motor assembly, which is a heavy-duty version of earlier technology found in civilian vehicles since the early 21st century, is connected directly to the vehicle chassis structure via an all-in-one pivot shock component. This combination of direct drive, in-wheel motor, and patented pivot shock technology is the latest form of the transaxle for the modern age. It is produced exclusively for the USASF and Weyland Utani Corp. by Roto Dynamic Industries. The M577 is operated by two crew, 
the driver and section commander, and allows 12 positions for passengers, all equipped with yoked harness restraints for orbital combat drop. Entry is via the main starboard side door or port side driver's hatch. The interior is surprisingly spacious, allowing plenty of room for weapons and supply stowage. The Marine 70 requirement called for the ability to carry sufficient ammunition and supplies for up to three days of fighting. In practice, this is possible, though the interior of the vehicle becomes somewhat cramped. In tactical areas where resupply is frequent, no more than two days of supplies and ammunition are usually carried. The rear of the crew compartment houses the Tactical Operations Center. From here, the section commander can maintain contact with the vehicle's infantry complement via video and audio link-up, and monitor the battle in real time via the battle management displays. The slab-sided shape of the APC hull provides for a high radar cross-section on the battlefield. An attempt has been made to reduce this by incorporating radar-absorbent materials into the hull skinning, with only partial success. Hull paints are laser-absorbent to protect against LiDAR, and the M577 boasts an infrared camouflage feature in which cooling elements are arranged in patches and stripes beneath the skin to break up the IR signature of the vehicle. The active defenses for the APC consists of a chaff flare decoy dispenser mounted to the rear of the vehicle, and a flare control jammer capable of spoofing millimeter wave tracking radars. Available power for this system is limited. The decoy dispenser, which is supplied by a multi-cartridge rotary feed, is also capable of releasing particulate smoke as a barrier against ranging or pulsed lasers. These defenses are automatically deployed if activated by the driver or vehicle commander. The M577 carries a formidable array of weaponry in support of its infantry complement. A hull-mounted cupola covering the APC's forward area carries two synchronous-side Republic Electric RE 720mm Gatlin cannon. Both weapons are supplied by a 1,700-round multi-feed ammunition dispenser which offers a selection of high-explosive, high-explosive armor-piercing, and beehive-type anti-personnel flatchet rounds at the flick of a switch. These caseless rounds carry no propellant and are fed mechanically into the revolving chambers which are then sprayed with hypergolic binary propellants which ignite and launch the round. Binary propellant systems are at this caliber, but aboard the M577, this system offers substantial weight, rate of fire, and reliability advantages over a standard caseless weapon and provides effective anti-personnel support for the APC. The only drawback of the weapon is that it is mounted to cover only the vehicle's forward arc, traversing between 60 degrees left and right of axis, and cannot be fired from a hull-down position. The 2-inch DSGR smart missile from Lockmart is a precision strike, multi-role, multi-platform munition that effectively neutralizes lightly armored and high-value targets close to civilian assets or friendly forces, offering strike capability whilst limiting collateral damage. The DSGR system puts Free Fire 80 missile and joint air-to-ground missile technology in a 2-inch guidance section that integrates seamlessly with legacy Free Fire rockets. DSGR offers lock-on after launch and lock-on before launch capability, target handoff, enhanced built-in testing on the rail, and laser coating from the Tactical Operations Center slash Gunner Station. The result is a laser-guided missile that offers capabilities beyond those of a simple guided rocket. DSGR is compatible with digital smart launchers. When increased loadout for reduced weight is a must, DSGR delivers. The M577's main weapon system is turret-mounted, allowing the APC to fire from the safety of a hold-down position. The turret assembly is fully traversable, self-contained, including ammunition and power supply, and is carried on a rail track which runs down the rear of the vehicle. Geared electric motors run the turret along the track and allow it to be depressed to the APC's rear, reducing the vehicle's headroom so that it may be carried inside a shuttle or dropship payload bay. The weapons are stabilized within the turret for firing while on the move and can be elevated and depressed between plus 85 and 7 degrees. Hydraulic ram on either side of the turret can tilt up to 15 degrees in all axes to provide additional elevation or maintain a level firing platform for the weapons. However, independently targeting automation systems can handle these functions, so reducing the commander's workload. The M577 APC model has two 20 MW Boyers PARS 150 phased plasma cannon mounted to the top of the vehicle. The power source of which is a 6 MW hydrogen fuel cell capable of powering 3,000 firings before refueling. A homopolar fast discharge generator which stores power until it has sufficient energy to pulse the plasma's gun laser is driven by the fuel cell. When the laser is fired, it creates an ionized trail in the atmosphere which is charged by the gun's electromagnetic coil to form a solenoidal magnetic tunnel. The ammunition, cadmium telluride pellets of around 5 grams mass, is fed mechanically into the tunnel, where it is vaporized by the laser beam in superheated plasma. 
which in turn is accelerated by the magnetic coil to velocities of 5,000 MIS. The plasma travels the tunnel until it impacts the target at a focus point, using its considerable kinetic and thermal energy for maximum effect penetration. Allowing for adequate cooling between shots, the cyclic rate of fire is 40 RPM. Each gun carries up to 1,000 rounds of ammunition, with the maximum range of 4,000 meters, though this figure is dependent on ambient atmospherics. The variant, M577A2, mounts two Republic Dynamics M2025 40-megawatt free electron lasers in the 2.0 to 3.0 micron range, which are effective against both ground and air targets. Beam power is supplied by a hydrogen fuel cell driving a homopular fast discharge generator. The beam is propagated without the need for lasers by the interaction of a particle accelerated electron beam with a static electric field. The lasers can be used in two modes. In dazzle mode, the beam is used to burn out enemy optical slash infrared sensors or blind infantrymen and pilots and has a low output of 20 to 50 kilowatts. It is in this mode that the beam is at its most efficient, playing continuously across a target without need for pulsing or the associated effects on beam propagation from thermal blooming, ionization, or dielectric breakdown. In the pulse mode, a beam is pulsed at full power at the target. Damage is caused by the mechanical impulse of the beam as it superheats the target area, and is capable of penetrating infantry personnel armor or the skin of a missile or aerospace craft within an effect range up to 3,000 meters. The M577A3 variant APC model has two mega electron volt turbo alternator powered charge particle beam cannon. The deployment of these weapons has been made possible due to the introduction of the Martin Continental Micro Magno Hydrodynamic Turbine capable of generating 20 megawatts of electrical power to run the big particle accelerator guns. Sufficient turbine fuel exists to power the guns for 50 seconds firing, and there is some 300 kilograms of deuterium tankage to provide particle beam mass. The effective range of the weapons against light armored targets is approximately 3,000 meters, though at longer ranges the beams are capable of disrupting unshielded electronics. With such precise detail behind the vehicle's functionality and weaponry, it's almost a shame we didn't get to see more of it in action in the film, though it is certainly a highly satisfying moment to see Ripley taking control, and to see her rescuing the surviving marines from the hive and taking down a xenomorph in the process, crushing its skull with the wheels of the APC. But it's the incredible detail and thought that went into the APC design that has caused it to remain a favorite among Alien fans for decades now, and one of cinema's best pieces of fictional vehicles. Aside from the APC and Aliens though, I'm curious to know what some of your favorite fictional vehicles are, science fiction or otherwise. Please comment below and let me know your personal favorites. And as always, I'd like to thank you very much for watching today. I really appreciate it, and if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a like, and you can also subscribe for all the latest videos from the channel. My very, very special thanks goes out to Wayland Yutani Executives, Emurik, Mark Fox, and in the Ellen Ripley tier of excellence, Lady Anne. My thanks also goes out to the Hive Queens, Ronnie Jensen, Alisane, and Jackson Roche, all part of the Patreon Hive. If you'd like to join the Hive and support the channel, check out my Patreon page for exclusive posts and contests. In the meantime, you can catch up with Alien Theory over social media. Follow at Alien underscore Theory on Twitter and at Alien Theory YT on Facebook and Instagram for more. And until next time, this is Alien Theory, signing off.